Hello, this is Andrew with Missing Remote, and we are back in my sump pump pit. Uh, a while ago I did a review on that water sensor over there, and unfortunately I had another sump pump type event the other day. This time the sump pump didn't fail. This Zoller uh, load balance, sump pump load balancer thing was the thing that failed. And actually, everything that has caused my base water to come into my basement is because some Zoller product decided not to work properly. So <laughs> take that for what it's worth. What happened was it, it just set a, it picked the sump, a sump pump, but didn't provide any electricity to it because the switch just stopped working. The load balancer just stopped working. The water sensor here did notify me. As you can see, I kind of have it stuck in the pit but by the time it notified me, there was already a little bit of water out here. So I decided to use this Zoos multi-relay. I just had, happened to have one of these laying around. I ran out and got a float sensor or float switch and then hooked it up to the Zoos relay. So. This is kind of a, rev a review of that Zoos Relay, but since I'm not really using it to its full potential, I, I'm not sure if we can really call it a review. It, it, it works, and it, it does some really cool stuff. Uh, you get three switches, or sorry, yeah, three switches. You can power it using USB Type-C, which is what I have connected up here, or you can feed it 12 volt using some kind of 12 volt power supply, three powered relays included in it. Uh, two of them can do 15 amps and one can do 20 amps. Uh, I imagine that the big one here on the far end is the one that does 20 amps. But like I said, I'm not using it for that right yet. One thing that I could do with it because I, these are 15 amp sump pumps is I could in theory use this to build a version of that. And the way that that works is that there's a float in the pit that every time the pit the float gets activated, it switches some pump. It switches the sump pumps. And you could build a load balancer, a sump pump load balancer using that relay. But I don't know that I would use it for that. I think that if I were going to build a load balancer, I would probably use something like this, or actually two of something like this. This is an appliance uh, switch, external appliance switch, that can do half horsepower, 15 amp. And since my sump pumps are both half horsepower, there's actually three sump pumps here, but the two that are in the pit that I would load balance would be half horsepower, 15 amps. So in theory, you could use two of these appliance switches and use the home automation controller with a float to work the way that the Zoller load balancer works and that the switch the float gets activated and it flips the sump pump from one sump pump to the other. I haven't quite decided if I'm going to do that or if I'm just going to go out and buy um, a different brand of sump pump load balancer. But all of that is a very long way of saying that I built myself a better way to detect if there's water getting up to the top of the pit. And that's what the real purpose of this video is, is to discuss. So let's zoom in a little bit here so we can see what we've got. So as I mentioned, I just happened to have this multi-relay sitting around. I was gonna use it for something else. I just never got around to doing it. And so it's doing the job here right now. We have a switch float. You can find these on Amazon. They're super cheap. I think I probably paid like, I don't know, seven bucks, 10 bucks or something for that. And then I built that bracket, this bracket here, which is just a, a bit of bracing metal with the holes drilled into it. Uh, you can buy that at any hardware store, probably 10 or 15 bucks for a really long piece of that. And I just used a vise to bend up into, into a bracket that just kind of compresses on the side of the pit here to hold the float out at a place which is a little bit above 
the uh, tube that connects this pit with this, the um, emergency pit. And we're going to quickly walk through how to do, like that, that was pretty easy. Um, it maybe took 10 minutes. I did have to drill the, one of these holes just a little bit bigger because the uh, switch float that I, or float switch that I have was a little bit bigger than that hole, but that was, was pretty quick. The magic of how this works is it's a, so it's actually a little bit tricky to make this switch float, this setup here, work the way that I want to with Hubitat, which is the um, controller that I use. And I'll quickly just demonstrate what happens when you activate the float switch here. Uh, the default is off, but then when you, when water would make it float up, hopefully you can all hear that, it turns the switch on. And we can see that in the log files here where it's just, you know, turning on and off again. And you need to take it, that, that's how you would use a uh, trigger, you write a trigger based on that event. And here is the rule. Now it's paused right now because I want to be able to flip that up and down freely without making it do what it's supposed to do. And we're just going to quickly walk through what it does. So it is a triggered event. When the float turns on, so when the switch on the float comes up, when the float comes up and turns the switch on, it activates this rule. And what it does is that every 10 seconds, it repeats a call to my Google Home to make noise, to say, the, check the sump pump, the pit is high. And then it should just keep doing that every 10 seconds until the condition of not sump pump float is on, then just stop it. And so I'm gonna turn this on and we can quickly demonstrate how that works. And now my Google Home is behind me, so hopefully the microphone picks that up. And I'm just gonna go ahead and flip this. Actually, let's, let's hit the logs so we can see the log file for what, what happens here as I do this. Broadcast from Andrew. Check the sump pump. Pit is high. It's from Andrew. Check the sump pump. Pit is high. So you can hear that it just keeps repeating this. And the thing that I want. Broadcast from Andrew. Check the sump pump. Pit is high. And this is exactly what I want because this never happens during the day when it's easy and convenient for me to deal with it. It always happens in the middle of the night. And I end up getting woken up by that repetition of the noise from the water sensor uh, over the, the Google Home or Amazon Alexa, which you can also do. Um, we have both. I just didn't, I haven't hooked it up to the Amazon Alexa quite yet. Unfortunately, you have to do, the, do it this way because the way that you would do it with a water sensor through the Hubitat Security Manager, it just doesn't support random switches which would, it would be better because then you wouldn't have to write such a complicated rule. Not that that's terribly complicated, but it does demonstrate the power and flexibility of one, home, home automation, and two, uh, what you can do with Hubitat. So hopefully you found that useful. If you did, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and I will get to them as soon as I can. Thanks.